Hello, I'm Jonah with Magnanimous Media, and this is a 4K RAW capable FS700. The 4K upgrade puts the FS700 in contention with digital cinema cameras such as the C500, Red Scarlet, Epic, F5, and F55. It does this by combining 4K RAW with high speed options that even rival the Epic for versatility and data rate. Like any digital cinema camera, the FS700 4K upgrade can seem complicated, and there are a number of new features to understand. So having a firm grasp on the system can be beneficial in understanding how its advantages can benefit your projects. In this video, I'll discuss the 4K FS700's capabilities, build, operation, and workflow, putting those aspects into context to give you a solid grasp on the system's operation. The capabilities that define the FS700 are resolution, color bit depth, raw recording, and high frame rates. All of the FS700's internal HD recording options are retained, but external raw recording comes in two flavors, 2K and 4K. 4K is recorded in 4096 by 2160, and 2K at 2048 by 1080, which gives it a 189 to 1 ratio. The benefit of this added resolution is more information. Even if your in-delivery is HD, the higher resolution will benefit the resulting image with more information to translate pixel data into the lower resolution image. Additionally, reframing in post has less severe consequences, and the higher resolution gives you more clarity for tracking data and stabilization. Shooting handheld can be more stable, and reframing a shot to exclude unwanted detail results in an image that will be less pixelated than with HD capture. 4K and 2K are recorded in 12-bit color depth, and internal recording is processed in 8-bit. In 8-bit, there are 256 possible values for each of the three color channels, red, green, and blue, resulting in millions of possible combinations of colors. In 12-bit space, there are 4,096 possible values for each channel, resulting in billions of possible combinations. What this translates to is smoother gradations between different color values and different luminance values. This also benefits color grading and stretching out those gradations, so shooting flat has fewer drawbacks and banding is less likely to appear. To put this into context, most prosumer cameras and some professional cameras process in 8-bit, the AF100, C100, C300, FS100, and most DSLRs. Stretching out the gradient in the sky, contrast in skin tones, and other subtle gradations can be pushed further than that of an 8-bit or 10-bit camera. The R5 recorder records a similar RAW format to the F55 at 3.6 to 1 compression. Exposure, color temperature, and other settings can be adjusted in post. The benefit of this is not only ease of correction, but also integrating this RAW sensor data often has higher end quality results when processed by a computer rather than the camera itself. The FS700 is often used as an affordable high-speed solution due to its ability to record full HD in bursts at 240 frames per second as well as higher frame rates at reduced resolution. With the RAW upgrade, the 700 can now record sustained 2K at 240 frames per second, as well as 4K at 120 frames per second in four to five second bursts. The Epic can record at 240 frames per second, but only in 2K with a cropped sensor. Given the comparison, the FS700 could be considered a more versatile solution, especially for projects with mixed frame rates, as the results will be more consistent across those frame rates. In order to be capable of recording 4K, the FS700 must first be upgraded by Sony. This is a process that takes at least a week, if not longer, so keep this in mind if you own an FS700 and intend on using the raw recording option for a future project. Because the FS700 requires an external recorder to record 2K and 4K raw, the build of this camera would be different than that of a standard FS700. The recording solution from Sony supports all of the capabilities, but does increase the overall build as it requires 15mm support, which can impact the support that you intend to deploy. Using a Steadicam or remote head may be problematic due to the overall length of the build, so consult with us on your intended support and give adequate time to test the setup. Additionally, we may have an alternative recording option or a setup that will allow for smoother operation and versatility. Once built, you'll need to activate output to send RAW to the recorder. This is done from the Record Outset menu. Simultaneous internal recording is an option to use as proxies or readily accessible dailies. Remember that simultaneous recording will not function while shooting high frame rates. 
4K Super Slow Mode can be accessed via the menu or by pressing the S and Q button. Record triggering should also be considered when shooting 4K Super Slow. These options will allow you to customize the triggering to maximize the effectiveness of the 4 to 5 second burst of 4K high speed, as it allows for pre-roll to give you a safe buffer for capturing the desired action. Middle and end trigger are best used for unpredictable subjects or actions that you cannot control, such as wildlife photography or sports. From 4K Super Slow, 2K Super Slow can be accessed by pressing the S and Q button again or from the S and Q menu. In this mode, you can press and hold the S and Q button to toggle between 120 and 240 frames per second. When you set up the recorder, you'll want to confirm that the record trigger is properly set. If you intend to use internal recording as proxies, be sure to set up clip naming and timecode to match that of the internal record. Some other functions in the recorder that are of note are the fan control and chunk options. The recorder does have an internal fan to regulate temperature, which can produce noise and create issues for audio. The chunk option breaks your clips into 4, 8, and 16 gigabyte files, which facilitate either transfer to a FAT32 drive or allow you to more easily break your transcodes into only the valuable clips. There are a number of software options for FS700 RAW workflow, whether you're setting up an offline or an online edit. As I discuss these software options, I'll talk about the pros and cons of online editing versus offline workflows. With the appropriate plugins, Adobe Premiere CS6 and Avid Media Composer Symphony support editing of the RAW in a native online edit. A 4K or 2K RAW online edit, directly editing the camera original footage, will be fairly resource intensive, so it may require a system with upgraded RAM and an advanced GPU and CPU, which may also include nodes or access to a server farm for timely rendering. The benefit of this method is that you'll retain maximum quality without sacrificing speed, so given an advanced editing system, you can go from production to editing to delivery without time-consuming transcodes or potential hiccups in reconforming. Once edited, you can still go to a grading program to finish color. For grading, Sony RAW is supported by DaVinci Resolve, Assimilate Scratch, Autodesk Flame, Digital Vision Nucoda, DVS Clipster, Filmlight Baselight, and Quantel Pablo. Native online editing is best for short productions that need to be quick to post but maintain maximum quality. An alternative to native online editing and less system intensive option is the transcode online edit. This means that you'll use a program to transcode the footage from Sony RAW to a resolution in codec that you can comfortably edit and finish in, such as DNxHD or Apple ProRes. You can transcode with any of the programs used to color grade Sony RAW. The downside of this method is that transcoding and grading all of the footage is potentially very time consuming. The transcode online edit is ideal for large or small productions that require a simplified workflow and low end data expenditures such as with a documentary. The final option is an offline edit where you edit with low quality proxies and then conform to the full quality original footage after the edit is complete. In an offline edit, proxies are either captured internally or via an external recorder during production or transcoded to a low-quality codec. The codec is not important, but it is important that the proxies have identical timecode and clip naming to those captured in RAW. To avoid issues when conforming, you should generate unique clip names that include a camera identifier and reel identifier while in production. After the edit is picture locked, you'll conform the footage in color grading software using an XML or EDL exported from your editing program. An offline edit allows for low system intensive editing, but retains the quality of being able to finish with the original footage. Offline edits are ideal for any project that does not have extreme time constraints, such as a narrative or documentary feature or short. The low data expenditures of the proxies mean that the editor can carry smaller files, making it ideal for an editor who is not on site. This provides quite a bit of ease and flexibility, but retains the benefits of finishing with the full quality RAW. The workflow and raw recording, as well as the high frame rates, make the 4K FS700 ideal for narrative features and shorts, as well as stylized videos that take advantage of the record quality and high frame rates. The cumbersome build means that it may not be ideal for productions that are fast moving with lightweight support gear. The recorder can be remotely mounted for a lighter build, but it must stay tethered to the camera. However, the strengths of this camera system have wide-reaching benefits and make it a less expensive alternative to the F55 and certainly a competitor to other 4K digital cinema cameras. For more news and tutorials, check us out at magnanimous.biz.